Therefore, it is time for member statements. The member from Thornhill. Thank you very much. Well, it's kind of an exciting day because uh, I've been involved in Thornhill politics for many years, and people know that I've been questioning when the Young Subway expansion is going to start moving a little forward. Uh, so there was a great announcement this morning, $55 million towards the planning of it. Unfortunately, there's no timeline, there's no date set. Uh, all of a sudden, we have to have the downtown relief line built, which takes 14 years before we can have the Young Subway. I'm asking if this government has discussed the possibility, which many experts have recommended, of a Young Subway Express route, which would tunnel under the existing Young Subway, as is done in many other cities like Seoul, Korea. And it would stop only at major stops along the way. It would be very fast. Maybe they could charge extra for it, and it would stop, say, Union, Bloor, and uh, the Eglinton LRT in Shepherd, and of course up in Richmond Hill. We all know that a young subway expansion would get tens of thousands of commuters off our roads, and maybe we need to reallocate, as I've been begging to reallocate money that's being spent on bus lanes, very low priority bus lanes. They're even starting, unfortunately, to build bus lanes on Bathurst and Centre Street for a little jog that will make the Highway 7 rapid way actually longer for commuters, which is really um, counterintuitive and counterproductive. So, Mr. Speaker, I'm excited that we're at least talking about the Young Subway, but let's stop talking, let's get the money for high priority projects, and let's get those shovels in the ground and the tunnels underground and get to work. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from Hamilton Mountain. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last week, I met with a group of mothers in my riding of Hamilton Mountain. They had one thing in common. They have children on the autism spectrum. And I have to tell you, Speaker, their experience is very different from the picture that this government tries to paint. These are parents who know their children can th thrive with IBI therapy. If, they've are, if they're already receiving IBI therapy, they know because they have seen the results. Even after just a few short months. If they haven't had the opportunity to start IBI, they know because they have faith in the professionals they work with who have, had, who have told them that their child needs IBI therapy. Despite what this government tries to say, their children and thousands of other children across Ontario are being transitioned off the wait list of IBI with no information of what their future holds. $8,000 only gets them two or three months of therapy that they need uh, that is recognized by the professionals. I stand here today and once again I plead don't leave these kids behind. They were told by professionals that this was the therapy that they needed, the ideal candidate, were, some were told, and then told weeks later that they are no longer eligible just because they're over the age of five. I say to the members opposite, stop repeating the same tired lines. Listen to your constituents. Grandfather these children and ensure that they get the therapy that they need. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to share with you a story about an Ajax hero. Don Ross passed away peacefully on Sunday, April 3, 2016, at the age of 85. An adored husband of Valerie and predeceased by his first wife, Shirley Nielagat, survived by his brother Murdoch and sisters Eunice and Elsie, proud father to Donna, Gary, Glenn, Larry, Sean, and Kevin, and grandfather and great-grandfather to many. I knew Don virtually all of my life as he dedicated four nights a week for almost 40 years training and guiding young boxing athletes and seeing their progress. His wife and family came first, and he also took a great deal of personal pride in working with youth, seeing them grow for almost no money at all. Don was a hardworking employee at DuPont Ajax before retiring for some 35 years. He was a true Ajax volunteer. There was a family celebration on Don's life at our Legion where hundreds of Ajaxians created an overflow crowd you simply could not move in. This man who moved mountains made these youth grow every day in personal stature. In 1991, five delegates were selected for the Canadian Boxing Hall of Fame. The first name mentioned that day was Don Ross of Ajax, Ontario. He was recommended by several noted boxers, and it seemed to be a record at the time, as the entire body of officials unanimously sanctioned by their approval to welcome Don Ross in the Canadian Boxing Hall of Fame in 91. His efforts had won him Ontario and Canadian acclaim. Mr. Speaker, that day, time stood still as his peers unanimously honoured him, Don Ross, forever. May God bless you, Don. We miss you. Thank you.
Thank you. <laughs> member Simpson, the member from Bruce Gray, one side. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm honored to rise today in recognition of ALS Awareness Month and in support of individuals and their families living with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. There are as many as 3,000 Canadians currently living with ALS, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease, named after one of baseball's all-time greatest players who died of ALS in June 1941. The ALS Society of Canada, together with provincial chapters and support groups, raised funds in their community during the month of June through different campaigns, from planting blue corn flowers, which is the official international flower of hope for ALS, to the ALS bucket challenges, the ALS hiker cycle, or one of the 90 walks happening across Canada. Mr. Speaker, treatments have been developed for other difficult diseases, and we believe it will be developed for ALS. I was proud to see many people participating in these campaigns and giving hope to people living with this dreadful disease. A number of my esteemed colleagues, Nipissing MPP Vic Fidelli, Perth Wellington MPP Randy Pettipiece, Wellington Halton Hills MPP Ted Arnott, and others, including myself, took part in the Bucket Challenge. It is all because of your spirit that Canadians helped to raise a combined $26 million for ALS last year. But the fight must go on, Mr. Speaker. I myself will be attending the Wyarton Walk for ALS this coming Saturday. Time is of the essence. I ask all members to once again give their support to the individuals, families, healthcare professionals, researchers, and volunteers to continue to be champions for ALS so that the dream of finding a cure soon becomes a reality. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Toronto, Danforth. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, in 2012, 42 years after the mercury poisoning of the English Wavagoon River system came to light, Premier Wynne was Minister of Aboriginal Affairs. She visited Grassy Narrows and expressed deep concern about the situation there and promised to make it right. She established an Ontario Grassy Narrows working group to get to the bottom of the continuing contamination and whether or not remediation of the river was possible. Four years later, she's Premier and the working group assembled a body of scientific work of the highest calibre that establishes that the contamination is a real and continuing threat to human health and also, as of this week, the scientific report submitted to the working group that the Premier herself established proved that the mercury contamination can and should be remediated, that something can and must be done about it. And yet, despite that report being delivered to her government more than a month ago, she claimed in question period on Monday that she'd not seen the report and didn't know, quote, the source of the report. Again, the report commissioned by the working group that she herself established. How can we take the Premier seriously when she talks about reconciliation with First Nations in this province and when she refuses to commit to an immediate cleanup of the mercury contamination affecting the people of Grassy Narrows? Will there be yet another generation of Grassy Narrows children who grow up to be contaminated by mercury? Will the Premier let this happen on her watch? Thank you. Thank you. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je Thank you, Mr. Um, Speaker. I would like to talk today about a cultural event, a fantastic cultural event in Kitchener-Waterloo. We're talking about uh, the annual picnic of the Franco Fête uh, being held on uh, June 26 this year. This activity will be held in French, but all those who like French uh, will be invited, and people will um, assemble to hear French-speaking artists and uh, uh, savor um, French cuisine. P young people will play uh, games and sports, and there will be also a book sale, a, fr uh, a French book sale. This is organized by the French-speaking association of Kitchener-Waterloo, uh, who, who uh, and has uh, celebrated the 400th anniversary of Champlain's presence in Ontario in 2015. Many activities are uh, proposed for all tastes and all ages. Uh, so I would, I would say I'm very anxious to be there at the annual picnic, and I wish all francophones and francophiles in my community a very good Franco fête. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member from Stormont Dundas South, Glen Gary. Thank you, Speaker. There's an old saying back home that Ontario starts in SD and G, and in particular Glen Gary County. The area was originally settled by Scottish immigrants from Scotland and Scottish Empire, United Empire Loyalists who were forced to relocate after the War of Independence. 
The SCNG Highlanders, Canada's oldest regiment, originated back in the Highlands as the Glengarry Fencibles, settled in Glengarry Council, County under the leadership of Bishop Alexander McDonnell, and were mobilized to play a crucial role in the War of 1812 and all of Canada's military actions since. Today, the Celtic culture remains strong and vibrant in Glengarry. In fact, in 2003, a study reported that percentage of young and old who were involved in Celtic music or dance dwarfs that of Cape Breton. McCullough dancer, Scottish dancers continue to perform for audiences around the world. The Glengarry Highland Games are the North American Pipe Band Championships. The Williamstown Fair, which is Canada and likely North America's oldest fair, keeps our Celtic history front and centre each year. Each Tuesday night in July, the Glengarry Celtic Music Hall of Fame hosts a free Cayley at the Williamstown Centre, where fiddlers, pipers and other musicians and dancers gather in informal jam sessions and refreshments. Last week, I attended the annual induction dinner where Neil McDonnell, David McPhee, the Glen Orchestra, McQueen family, and John Paul Vashaw were all inducted into the hall, joining a long list of Glengarians who have kept traditions uh, alive for more than 200 years. It was once again a sold-out affair with great food, great company, and of course, great Celtic music, singing, and dancing. I want to congratulate President Isabel Clark and her team on another great event. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Eglinton Lawrence. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, today I'd like to honor a philanthropic superstar. He's our local dentist at Dufferin and Lawrence, and his name is Dr. Aldo Baccia. He is a proud member of the Toronto Earls Court Rotary Club. He has raised millions of dollars for the Macmillan Blur view uh, center for uh, children who need special rehabilitation. He has raised money for his local church. He has uh, raised money for St. Joseph's Hospital. Wow. He uh, is, again, a, an incredible community-minded uh, leader. He's been just awarded two prestigious awards, the Human Humanitarian Service Award from the Alpha Omega Fraternity, which is an international fraternity of uh, uh, dentists. He's also uh, been awarded another uh, award by the Ontario Dental Association, uh, the Barnabas Day Award for Distinguished Service. So Aldo Bacha, Dr. Bacha, never stops donating, raising money for his community. Along with his super powerful wife, uh, Peggy, they are amazing examples, and he's most proud of being a Rotarian. As he says all the time, service above self. So we praise this amazing philanthropic superstar, Dr. Aldo Bocha, and hopefully he'll continue to do this for decades to come. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Burlington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I was proud that in 2014, my private member's bill declaring June as Ontario Bike Month passed in this legislature. It's an exciting time for cyclists in our province. Just this morning, I had the pleasure of attending the All-Party Cycling Caucus with colleagues from all sides of the House as we enjoyed a bike ride around Queen's Park. Ontario Bike Month recognizes and celebrates the growing popularity of cycling in communities, the economic, environmental and health benefits of cycling, and encourages Ontarians to enjoy the beauty of our province and the joy that comes with cycling. With our province's $25 million investment in cycling infrastructure, including $15 million to create safer, more connected provincial bicycling routes, cycling is becoming a more attractive transportation and recreation choice for many. Now more Ontarians than ever are choosing to ride their bikes on a regular basis, with an estimated 600,000 Ontarians, or 5% of us, riding daily. Many communities across Ontario, including my own, are celebrating Bike Month with bicycling activities such as Bike to Work and Bike to School campaigns throughout the month of June. Burlington alone has seen a 600 per cent increase from last year in the number of schools participating in bike to school activities. Also in my riding, the Burlington Cycling Committee hosted cycling seminars throughout the community to promote bike safety and maintenance for all ages free of charge. I'm thrilled to see this increasing recognition amongst our provincial government and all Ontarians about the growing importance of cycling. Finally, Mr. Speaker, I invite all of my colleagues to participate in the Share the Road Cycling Coalition's hashtag Ride the Riding social media campaign and enjoy a bike ride with cyclists in their riding this summer. Let's celebrate June on two wheels. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements.